Hello class, this is MSE 403G Ceramics. Again, this is Tom, Dr. Com, Tom Groeschel. Um, we are going to uh, review a little bit and talk about the atomistic view of diffusion, uh, where we left off before uh, exam two, before the break. Uh, so we are going to, uh, to look at that um, uh, first. So let's go ahead and show the diffusivity equations that we came up with last time. So we have the diffusion, diffusivity of interstitials, d int is equal to alpha int lambda squared nu naught, and then the exponential over, so that is the enthalpy of migration for interstitials over kt. We also came up with an expression for vacancy diffusivity, uh, again having alpha, and then that squiggly term uh, we talked about, uh, lambda squared, u naught, and then the exponential, and a similar migration term over kt. And then lastly, we have the ionic diffusivity d uh, ion, uh, which is instead of looking at the uh, vacancy, is looking at the actual ionic species. Uh, and so that expression is lam uh, alpha lambda squared. This new term, uh, the, the squiggly term, mu naught, and then the exponential. over kt. All right, so these are our uh, diffusivity expressions uh, for interstitials, uh, for vacancies, and for uh, ionic species that we derived uh, thinking about it from an uh, atomic, uh, atomistic view. So we sort of derived all these terms and came up with these uh, expressions. And so now what we want to try to do is make some connections. So the first thing we'll notice is that uh, d ion is equal to this uh, lambda term that we have times the diffusivity of vacancies. So those two are connected. Uh, ionic and vacancy diffusivity are connected by this lambda term. Uh, and just in case I didn't uh, explain it well last time, this lambda capital lambda that we see is the site fraction of vacancies. So I'm trying to keep with the book's um, uh, nomenclature, and so this is what the book uses uh, for the site fraction of vacancies. So this is something that we can uh, calculate. Um, and so since this site fraction of vacancies is usually much less than one, right? Because again, there's not a lot of vacancies compared to the normal sites. And so that tells us that the ionic diffusivity then is gonna be much less than the vacancy based on uh, that expression. So again, this can seem odd because we're talking about uh, either the vacancy or the ionic species related to these. So even though we're talking about either the ionic species um, or the vacancy that goes along with that, the diffusivities are different uh, because of this site ratio. Uh, and so we have, uh, so we can look at uh, the, an expression that connects these two uh, together. So let me just write out a couple other things to uh, help here. So again, the site fraction, uh, we can specify this and approximate it as the concentration of vacancies over the concentration of ions, again with the assumption that the concentration of vacancies is very small, something that we've used uh, throughout. And so that means that our diffusivity of the ion times the concentration of the ion is equal to the diffusivity of the vacancy times the concentration of vacancies. So 
the diffusivities of these two species are not equal. So that's not something that we can claim. But we can say that this expression, right, diffusivity times concentrations uh, of these species have to be equal. We know that from uh, basically uh, plugging in this expression of lambda uh, into our expression up here, right? Because this is equal. And so plugging in this, we get this expression down here. And so this uh, has to be equal. All right. So what that tells us uh, about this system is that um, defects, defects, sorry, move uh, more often, meaning uh, we, for example, if we're looking at this uh, diffusivity of vacancies, um, defects move more often, but the concentration, there's not as many of them, right? There's not as many of them, so our concentration uh, is lower. Whereas if we look at the other side, the um, of the atoms or ions, these move less frequently, so D is lower in this case, uh, but they're much more numerous, right? There's more ions than there is uh, vacancies. So that's kind of what this says. So the diffusivity, for example, is not what we would call conserved because the diffusivities are not equal, but diffusivity times uh, concentration uh, is in this case. Uh, and so we have that expression. All right, the derivation we looked at so far um, only accounts for enthalpy. So that's important to, to keep in mind when we're looking at this uh, atomistic view uh, of diffusion. And so when we think about that, we have enthalpy, but we haven't considered uh, entropy. And so that's something to, to keep in mind. And so now if we look at the entropy associated with this migration, we kind of look at the slide here. So the initial state, we have uh, an atom, and then we have a vacancy to the right of it. And because that um, atom has a vacancy next to it, it's going to vibrate differently than something that is completely surrounded uh, by atoms. But also, the entropy changes when you look at the process of migration. So in this middle part here, the activated state, uh, again, the atom has to sort of squeeze through this narrow passage. And right in the middle, you'll see that it's kind of pushing these two atoms uh, apart. And so that means that it has change it, changed the vibrational frequency uh, during this, uh, this process. So this excited state or this activated state um, has a different entropy uh, associated with it. And so we have to, to look at this. All right, so that entropy that we looked at, delta S M is the entropy of migration, right? So we have that. This is, again, the change in vibration when we look at that excited state. And so now we can write the Gibbs free energy of migration is equal to the enthalpy that we've seen throughout, and then minus T delta S, and again, this entropy term, right? So this is the more accurate way of looking at this when we're looking at diffusivity is to look at the Gibbs free energy, not just the enthalpy. So if we want to have a sort of more accurate expression of the ionic diffusivity, then we can now incorporate this instead of enthalpy. And so I'll rewrite this uh, as uh, d ion for the uh, ionic diffusivity is alpha lambda squared omega Sorry, that's uh, sorry, that's lambda, uh, and then we have the squiggly, which is xi again, uh, nu naught, and then the exponential. In this case, we have two exponentials. We have the exponential for the entropy term m over k, and then exponential of the enthalpy over. Kt. So basically, we've added in the expression for Gibbs free energy here, uh, taking away 
uh, subbing in what we had for the enthalpy. So we've just incorporated both of those uh, together to give us a uh, sort of deeper look um, at this. All right, so now we sort of have all of this in this sort of more accurate way of looking at the ion diffusivity. I want us to sort of think back to our original expression that I gave you for diffusivity. I told you that the ionic diffusivity was in a pre what I just call a pre-exponential, so d naught, and then exponential of minus q over kt, right? So q was the activation energy, and then d naught, again, this is the pre-exponential having trouble spelling here. Um, so that's our pre-exponential. Um, and so I told you this is an, an empirical expression. Again, having trouble spelling here, uh, but bear with me. So this is a empir empirical expression, which means that it was discovered by experiment, right? So somebody did uh, an experiment and found that the diffusivity uh, is a function of temperature in this way, right? So they just did some experiment to figure this out. And so d naught and the activation energy then um, don't really have a physical significance unless we assign it to it. And so that's why we uh, took this previous approach of trying to derive it from an uh, atomistic view of diffusivity. And so now what we want to look at is sort of uh, combine those and see what these terms would be. So in our expression that we derived, you'll see everything um, outside of the exponential with respect to temperature. So this last term here, everything else, this whole thing here, right? So alpha, lambda squared, lambda again, and then this expression with the entropy of migration which doesn't have a factor of t in it. So all of this is basically equivalent to that pre-exponential d naught, right? So basically we just uh, are assigning what we think this pre-exponential is, is all of this, right? And when we look at this, this uh, all these factors are going to be related to material properties, right? If you go step by step through all of these, you'll see that these our, our material properties, what we can look up for a specific uh, material, right? So I said, I mentioned before, the pre-exponential was related to the material that you're dealing with, right? So that's kind of assigning what we think of d naught. Uh, the other part that is um, above the kt, so here we have, uh, again, an expression of kt, same thing over here. So in this case, the enthalpy of migration is equivalent to this activation energy, right? So the enthalpy it takes to move an atom from one space to another, right? The energy associated with that is the same as our activation energy that we have here. So that's kind of what this is saying. And so basically, again, we've derived this expression. There are limitations to it. That's something to keep in mind. Um, but this is putting sort of meaning behind these uh, uh, terms in this ex uh, empirical uh, expression. So that's kind of the, the beauty of what we've done here is we've assigned some values to these two terms in this empirical expression up here, right? So that's kind of what we've done here. Um, and so next we're going to look at the temperature uh, dependence of diffusivity.